<laughs> Fair enough. I'm going to jump right back into it. Uh, thanks to everyone for uh, joining us tonight. Again, uh, we are uh, working through some changes, so I appreciate your guys' patience. And uh, we're going to jump back into it. When we last left off with the, the horsemen, it is uh, the group managed to in a very bizarre, bizarre arc, uh, go to a uh, ocean oil rig, the OO982, uh, where uh, the corporation was doing some interesting off the books uh, genetic engineering and research. Some things that happened there, uh, tyrannic, uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, the janitor, the master of disguise, no one, no one disguises himself as well as uh, Tyrannic disguises himself. Sure. And uh, the uh, simian now lives up to his name, found a hyper-intelligent gorilla that replaced his legs with uh, legs much like uh, his own and several other gene mods. And Lapis and jean they managed to uh, actually get the items that they <laughs> They... 3D printed the heads of Bureau G for Ms. Harani, who uh, offered to trade back uh, Zhang Wei and uh, Ida in exchange for the heads of her enemies. And so, as we get uh, as we get back into it, the the group definitely uh, has made it back to shore. And as you stand huddled across the street uh, from the high rise where Hurani said that she would meet you, it's raining. Why is it always raining in Pan Pacifica? The rain uh, gathers the oil and the gasoline from the streets, collecting it in swirling uh, pearlescent uh, eddies and runnels that make their way from the, sit the buildings to the awnings to the streets and down into the sewers. You feel like the city should be far more clean in the middle of a rainstorm, but somehow it just doesn't feel like that. As you stand again huddled in a uh, under this small awning, the neon lights reflect in the puddles as cars and bicycles and pedestrians go by, shattering the image of the sky above. As you stand huddled in the awning, you realize you have duff, uh, heads in a duffel bag. Yep. And that's where we'll start. Yep. Uh, I am grateful that these heads in the duffel bag are not leaking any fluids. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, especially because I have the duffel bag across my back. And, you know, the anything that I feel dripping onto me is rain. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. However, Lapis, you're, you're Lapis. I am. Uh, it's going to be really weird if you had three perfectly clear printed, or sorry, four perfectly clean printed uh, heads. Oh no, to... we distressed them. That's yeah. why we distressed them. Okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I like, I like I don't, I don't distress. the discussion of distressing, but that is... Uh, oh, I have a note. V and yeah. Lapis quote distress. That it's my last okay. note. Yeah. And Lapis also, let's just like... say hello to Zero Earth Element and Josh and Mr. <laughs> Furious. Good to see all of you. Yeah. Evan, yeah. always, always good to see you uh, in chat. All right, so... Yeah, I have that note, too. <laughs> it's, right. Yes. Like, I... Yeah. <laughs> I went up and I shot right. a couple of them. And, yeah. Yeah, Lapis went a little harder than we did in distressing them, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> the heads look uh, used. Welcome, great. 
Yeah. All right, so what's the plan? You guys stand across the streets, cars go whizzing by every so often, throwing up little sheets of uh, city stained water in uh, bright neon plumes as it catches the light of the signs and the windows from the buildings around you. Uh, well, we have her phone number. You do. And so knowing that V has already hacked the phone, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna call her. Hmm. Are any of our extra friends, the the monkey, the robot, our old man friend, are they with us? Uh, so Lapis's boyfriend. The, Lapis's boyfriend. Uh, Lapis's boyfriend is not with you yet because he had to finish his shift. Yet. <laughs> uh, the monkey took uh, Simeon back to the uh, safe Aru safe house. Something about his body. <laughs> rejecting some of the gene mods, but I'm sure I can tinker with it. Uh, and Scotty's there because, gosh darn it, mm. Scotty goes everywhere with V. They're best friends. I've never had a best friend, but I'm really glad that I have one now. Tell you about my and, uh, best friend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ah, so you're calling her on you? Yeah. yeah. I'm totally putting her on speakerphone. Nice. <laughs> I will listen intently. <laughs> <laughs> You can't work the phone. I, I, would, I would if I could. <laughs> <laughs> I'm great on the phone. So. Uh, no, no, it is fine. One second, I will. Uh, I will speak with them now. Yes. I'm here to deliver. I'm sorry. Did you did you not hear me? I'm, I, I'm here to deliver. Hmm. The heads. Obviously. Yes. Well, then come on up. There are old friends who wish to speak with you up here. <laughs> Why don't you bring Edith and Zong down? And we'll just do the exchange in the middle of the street and go our separate ways. Oh. Uh, no. Are you Here's the thing. Wet? You have no leverage here. You have, presumably, a quartet of heads. I have two living people. Sidebar. V does not say this into the phone. This is from Becca and Michael. Don't we have dirt on her? Like, don't we have proof that she... Like, didn't we find something that's... I thought we got her fired. Is that... Or, we... or did, the, did the B team get her fired? Uh, Bureau G, G got, her got her fired. Um, I don't know that I have any dirt on her because I, I think okay. the Storm Knights in general might. I don't know if we do specifically. Okay, I can remember. Mm. Fine. There's four of us coming up. Excellent. I am minutes. on the 56th floor. Come join us. I hang up. I say something uh, that Working is Working Bork Bork Bork. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, inappropriate. Uh, <laughs> it sounds that, better in the original Klingon. That Borking Glitch. <laughs> yeah. Glitch. That Borking Glitch. Yeah. Glitch. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, shove the phone into my pocket and uh, head out across the street. Scotty can go first, right? <laughs> That's okay. Sure. I feel like your lizard pet wants to see me dismantled. I think he just wants to see you in action, Scotty. Yeah, well, I've heard great things. I think you can handle it. Jam, what's the surveillance like on this building? Um, as you look around, 
uh, be even without making a computer roll. And if you want to make a computer roll, you can get a better, a computer or a find roll, you can get a better view of it. But even as you look around, you can see this is one of the chrome and glass high rises. So this is a fully smart building. Your, your default assumption is that uh, there are eyes everywhere. Big Brother is watching and probably listening and definitely uh, reacting to the footprints in the, you know, the footsteps in the hallway. Okay. Um, how long? How long have I had to to tinker with Scotty? Um, you know, like, I mean, you haven't really had a whole lot of time to tinker with him. The time, the downtime that you had was repairing him. You had maybe an hour each way on the on the helicopter. But in what are you what him, are you looking for? Well, I'm kind of wondering, can we, can I rig Scotty to be a walking jamming signal? You definitely can. The question is, have you had time? So what I will need is a computer roll from you. Okay. And... and a possibility in the attempt. Okay. Now it's the start of a new act, so you have all of your possibilities back, but uh, this is sort of a on the fly kind of thing. So my initial roll is a 17. Okay, this is gonna be a nearly impossible check, by the way. So this is gonna be a DN 20 in two hours to sort of jury rig him to do this. We'll Great. see where we're at. I will spend an action to get it to 20. All right, so here's the thing. At a 20, you know that you've got a one use jamming device built into Scotty. Okay. It's unclear how long it will last, and it's gonna fry as soon as, you know, you know, it'll last for a certain amount of time, and then it's gonna, it's gonna be done. So you will have, you can, you can trigger it as a free action uh, with some sort of code word, I assume, that you will transmit to uh, Scotty at some point. The code phrase will be, beam it, Scotty. Beam it real good. Beam it real good. I don't think I need to write that one down. Nice. <laughs> I feel like I tried to make it pretty on the nose. All right, so you guys cross the street. Yep. Is there um, anything else you want to do before? Before we walk into what's an obvious trap? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm planning to hack the elevator so they can't, you know, drop it down on us. Oh, good. Uh, mm -hmm. I was thinking we should we'll go in, get whatever elevator's down the floor, hit like four of them to show up on the 56th floor. Oh, there we go. Oh, and then we get idea. into one mm -hmm. of them, and so then that way, like a whole bunch of doors open. Yeah, okay, so your initial entry plan is the sixth grade elevator prank. I yes. love it. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, clearly. I mean, if we really wanted to be sixth grade, we would open four Christmas tree all the lights and then get in one and just stop on every floor so they have to impatiently wait for us. I mean, yeah. I was thinking about that too. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and, then, and then sunscreen in in the uh, in the touch dials yeah, yeah. okay yeah. so once in a while set up uh it does not take you very long um to wait for all the elevators to come down in this little quad set and uh hit 56 on each of them and then uh -huh. jump into one yep uh the elevator uh as it, that you get in, it closes, and you kind of hear over the comm speaker this long-suffering sigh. <laughs> might be Evan Rickman. You don't know. Um, but the elevator rises up, and it's one of those elevators that um, the backside of the elevator is a three-panel 
um, reinforced multiple tempered glass window that just looks out into the rain and the street as you rise up 56 stories. Okay. And you can see quite clearly the one next to you going up like a little before you, yeah. not too much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there is this this strange, almost double dinging noise, and the elevator. Your elevator opens up, and there there is a a, uh, a, uh, a an old, like white haired woman who is currently stretching out like three, four uh, large terry cloth towels right in front of your elevator, and you can see the other two open. And this is one of those buildings where, or at least this floor, it opens up to an apartment. Right, you kind of, you're in the atrium of the apartment. And she kind of looks up and smiles at you. Please just wipe your wet uh, and possibly stained shoes. Or in fact, if you would like to take them off, that would be even better. And then she turns and looks at the camera and says, welcome certified to a camp. And then returns. <laughs> yeah, I'm not wearing any shoes. So that's easy. <laughs> she points to a, a like, like an indoor rug, like like what, what something you would have right outside of like a house, you know, kind of that really rough thing. And do you, if you would please scrape your <laughs> claws clean, that would be most appreciated. I'll clean the bottom of my boots, but I'm not taking them off. Mm. You know, they go up my calves. They're they're a little troublesome to do, get on and off. Do they have flippy floppies, like complimentary flippy floppies we can wear? <laughs> they they do, Tyrannic. You look around and you're gonna have to wear like three pair a foot, but I think you'll be able to. <laughs> One on each claw. Great. Uh, now, is the floor marble so that if we haven't dried our feet off well enough, these flippy floppies are just gonna like slide <laughs> straight down the No, no. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the floor is a, uh, a a deep burgundy, and it's woven through with golden thread in um, just large kanji on the floor. Okay. I'll give some to Peaches, too. Peaches doesn't suffer it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the He immediately this... takes off, and they fall off, and he kind of gives you a wing shrug <laughs> and continues to goes and perches on a couch. The uh, Adina's putting on flip flops <laughs> causes Lapis to lose a little, and she just starts giggling. I mean, I'll put some. I don't know that you guys have ever heard that. Scotty, but I don't think he has toes, so I don't think they're gonna work. Okay. But similar to Lapis. Please come in. What? Miss Hurani is waiting for you in the receiving room. Excellent. And our friends are also there. Uh, I, I believe so. There are several people there waiting. Uh, is there anyone with bright red, thick hair? Bright red, thick hair? Yeah. Uh, no, no, um, Miss Lapis, no, none at all. Uh, and I'm gonna ask, and, and what's your name? And she kind of gives you a bashful smile. Hi, no, I am. I am uh, Miss Hurani's uh, uh, and she says something you don't quite understand. She's like, it is not for me to do anything but to introduce you. I, I will announce you, Miss V. Okay, and I'm just gonna palm her some money. I feel like it never hurts yeah, to sure. grease the palms of the doorkeeper. Yeah, so I, I'm just gonna go I appreciate you and all the work that you do. Mm -hmm. yep. It is, it is, uh, it is a pleasure uh, to to be of service both to you and to uh, Mrs. Harani uh, or Ms. Harani. Okay, I was gonna say as we walk, I'm gonna ask. So, uh, no, Mr. Harani. We just don't know you. Ah, uh, that is not for me to oh. to share. She will share whatever she wishes. Mm. Oh, okay. 
I nudge Tyrannic. <laughs> Sounds like she's single and ready to mingle. <laughs> All right, Tyrannic, I need to ask you one very important strategic question. Sure. Do you have a romance card? Do you have a romance card at this point? I'll never tell. <laughs> Tyrannic never kisses and tells. No. Well, he that's does. Not, that's not for you to worry about. Don't worry. Mine is not to question. Mine is but to, uh, to do. Um, as you walk in, uh, the uh, this nameless service kind of uh, leads you uh, in a very slow shuffle down this hallway uh, to a set of uh, gold foiled doors. And as she approaches, the doors just kind of open automatically. And uh, inside, you can immediately smell uh, a, a very uh, earthy, note in the air, uh, almost like a tobacco smoke. And uh, you can see that um, the woman from the helicopter is currently standing in front of a, a large set of glass windows that are tinted, but she's looking out over, over the city of Shanghai. And as she turns around, she kind of nods to uh, her servant first and then looks at you and offers you uh, uh, kind of gestures to these uh, large overstuffed leather couches. I believe we can discuss these negotiations and these dealings as civilized people. Civilized, of course. Uh, I need proof of life. I need proof of death. So we are in uh, in agreement. Right. Mm -hmm. How about we start? And she uh, reaches over to just the edge of the couch and taps something on the wood, and you can see uh, the like her, the the wood glows under her fingertips, and a door opens up, and two corporate security guards, like like heavy uh, flak jackets and armor. Uh, you know, ceramic armor, full face masks. You can see grenades, uh, like four grenades, two on each collarbone come in. They don't, they're not holding their weapons. Their weapons are currently slung behind their back, but they're walking on either side of Zhang Wei, who kind of wide eyed, like looks at you and is, breaks out into just this huge grin. Ha, ah, you have returned. I had no doubt, Edith and I both. We both agreed that you would, you would return and you would, oh, I, I was informed of the, the cost of my freedom. I, I, I do not know how I can repay you, but I will do my, my utmost to re restore this debt and this balance between us. And he kind of looks at Lapis's duffel bag and shakes his head. Uh, Kurani sits down. There, I have, I have given one proof of life. Now, I assume your duffel bag is filled with the heads of those I wished slain? You asked for heads. That's what I have. I would like to see the auditor's head. I know, right? All right, I, slit, I pull it off. Which one's that? I let it, like, kathunk onto uh, the table. Kind of hard, maybe a little like, oh. rough. Sidebar, in the distressing, I would like to say that B and Lapis also distressed the bag, so it looks like, you know, there's a little bit of blood on the bag, too, so then it's, you're putting something dirty on those couches. There you go. All right, so the auditor's head hits because Lapis thunks it and it kind of rolls, kind of briefly comes up, hits the side of the table, tongue uh -huh. lolls out. You do not. And she pulls out uh, a small blade and clicks it open. You do not mind, I assume. I mean, if that's what you're into. Yeah, you're that hungry? <laughs> She puts the blade in inside uh, the auditor's 
head and scrapes the inside of the cheek. She pulls out her Zuzu and uh, scans the tissue sample. Do you put that thing up to your face? And she cleans the blade and wipes it off on a small towel and just kind of sets it on the table and the nameless servant kind of walks up and, and carries it off. It matches what I have on file. So I assume in that duffel bag of yours, that is where the other heads are. Yeah. I assume back in that room, we have uh, Edith as well. Might I offer you some um, baiju? So, this is going to be more than four heads in exchange for two. I, hmm. in the interest of complete disclosure, I do not have your friend Edith. Uh, oh. And the door opens again. The smell of tobacco kind of grows stronger as two people enter. And no, I would have to say that is uh, that is my fault that Edith is not here as the Frenchman and the woman in red enter the room. I pull my gun and just oh, leave it at the, at the Frenchman. It is, uh, it is good to see both you and uh, jean Vieve and I'm sure you have a name. Give me uh, a good reason why I don't and shoot Scott's you. like, Scotty! <laughs> <laughs> give me one good reason why I don't shoot you. I will give you six. I look over at the woman in red and I say, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, just ask her. So, heard from Archibald recently? She oh. smiles. I was very present for his coalescence. Mm. That's nice to know. She is number one, Archibald being number two. Three being I am the one that uh, Edith spoke to and the reason that Edith is not here. And uh, four, five, and six are the debt that you owe me for all of the help over the last year and a half after Archibald and your friends uh let you how did you put it uh there are so many metaphors out the dry under the bus left for dead those I, and i do not know what the word is in english but they were very strong words anyway i was uh i was brought in as i was uh, speaking to the lovely uh ms hurani we were doing a uh, a business arrangement between the two of us, and uh, that's when, who should I see appear here? But this fine young, or sorry, fine uh, entrepreneur, uh, hard to reach items, uh, who of course I have a kin with, and uh, the woman who took care of my werewolf problem for me, uh, Edith. And Edith and I got to speaking, and she spoke about uh, Okinawa, and having to deal with some things there and I might have mentioned several monsters that I needed slain on Okinawa and in exchange for the cancelling of one of her debts she allowed me to send Edith ahead to uh, let us say clear the path for you also I have been told and he looks right at UV that someone has been crossing out lines in the ledger I uh, assume that would uh, would be you. You are carrying around one of the ledgers that I uh, asked you to recover for me and have been <sighs> settling scores. Where are you hearing that this is happening? 
listen, I, uh, one does not build a cross-cosm black market empire without having ears everywhere. Are you denying that you have uh, been using the ledgers for your own advantage? I, listen, I've told you many times, V, that this, uh, Delphi Council thing will get you killed. You should come, and you should work for me. And you can see, like, the lady in red's eyes sort of narrow a bit on you. No, no, she has different talents than yours. So, and and the the servant kind of comes up with a little tray, and he's like, he puts the, the uh, cigarette out. So, <laughs> does V have a romance card? Is what the chat is wondering. He comes and sits down. Now, what I understand here is that. Uh, you have made a deal for the heads of Storm Knights, which, honestly, I would have thought was beyond the pale for, for you, V, and whoever you are. I'm Scotty! Not you, robot man. The lizard thing. Uh, as we all know, I assume Lapis is the one who did the deed. So I perhaps I'll, we can... I'll do a deep bow with my cloak and uh, wink in his direction. <laughs> uh, he definitely winks back. Oh, okay. Oh, I now know who you are. <laughs> you are Grigori's bow. Ah, you know Grigori. We have had uh, dealings. Uh, much okay. like me and Ms. Hurani and me and, uh, and he looks at you, Ms. Lapis? Hmm. We've never actually spoken of your, uh, connection status. Oh, I'm feeling a lot better, so I go in for some Italian kisses. <laughs> and, and I also, the one thing that you guys taught Tyrannic that has stuck. <laughs> I think, too, like, that he, since he's wary of Lapis, I think that, that endears him a little bit to me, too, so... Uh, he is French, so he doesn't blink, and, uh, he returns the kisses. All right. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, all right, now that this touching reunion is done, he has taken care of Edith. He has procured a flight for her to the island, private chartered, at great expense. Never get in deals if you do not want to pay. The devil always gets his due. <sighs> so as you can see, you have done the deal for me. I have done the deal for you. As far as I see, our accounts are balanced. Oh, I'm, I'm you said they're balanced? <laughs> Um, no, they're not, because you don't have Edith that you were going to return back to me, and you didn't bother to inform me that you weren't going to be able to uphold the end of the deal, and yet I still finished my job. Does Edith have her Zuzu proof that she is where you say she is? Your friend Edith can barely operate the shower in this place. But I do, and she picks up her Zuzu and swipes a couple of things, and this this hard light screen kind of descends from the ceiling, and you can see Edith clearly getting into uh, a... a uh, uh, 
what am I trying to say, like a private jet. And then you can see kind of where it is in real time. It's approaching uh, Japan as you speak. Also, just because Edith is from Rome doesn't mean she doesn't know how to use a Zuzu. Because I have trained Edith how to use a Zuzu. So, is there, you know, a way we could talk to her? I can, listen, there is push this button if the phone rings, and then there is how to use a Zuzu. Yes, Zero Earth Element, good catch. I, uh, I can open a channel to her, if you would like, full video and audio. As proof of life that she looks right at Lacus, and you can just see the Frenchman gets the biggest grin on his face. Would that be sufficient? Sufficient? No, but it would be a nice start. Actually, there might be something else uh, if you want. The uh, heads. Zhang Wei is just kind of like, he is a uh, is looking around at everyone, expecting violence at, at any point. Anytime someone speaks, like you can hear, like the glass, the glass rattling. Uh -huh. <laughs> he looks back and forth. Lapis says something, and he looks, and then uh, Harani says something, and he looks. And uh, Scotty is kind of looking at himself yeah. in the tinted glass window, like. Who am I? What am I doing here? Is this actually me? Is my soul? Do I have a soul? What's a soul? Um, violence is always an option, uh, but there's also another way, Evan. Uh, very well, we will speak after this. I am uh, honestly, V, I think you are rubbing up on Lapis. The Lapis I knew was not uh, a negotiator in, uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, and Harani so just kind of glares. Lapis hasn't put away her gun yet. Uh, but you're talking, which is, yeah, I at am At this talking. point, <laughs> you should know that both of the corporate security guards have their weapons out now as well. Yeah. Um, sidebar, Jam, if I taste the tea, is it poisoned? Uh, it is not. Neither the tea nor uh, the alcohol is poison. It's actually uh, to to uh, these sensors like very refined and very expensive. Uh, so the screen changes and it's sort of you uh, at first the sound comes in. First, all you hear is the sound of the wind rushing past, and then you definitely hear kind of Edith. Uh, like, like grunts of pain that are definitely uh, Edith's, and it's like, oh no, 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 yeah. And as the as the light comes in, you can see Edith is on this plane. She is lying face down on a table, and there's someone with an elbow kind of right under her shoulder blade, really working it in. And she kind of looks up and she's like, oh, hey guys. Hey, Edith. Hello. You, you okay? Uh, yeah, no, this is, this is kind of not what it looks like. Look, I just need you to tell this lady that I have trained you how to use a Zuzu because she seems to think you're too, too dumb to use any technology. I did not say she is dumb. I said that the, <laughs> listen, the, the Orosh is not known for its. Uh... She's like, no, it's uh, the, listen, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, like you said a lot of really big words and I nodded along and I totally monkeyed the, uh, the thing. But honestly, unless this thing starts buzzing and I see your face, Listen, this is how, do you want contradictions? Because this is how contradictions happen. Uh, I put my gun away. 
uh, the two security guards kind of wait a second, and then they sling their their weapons behind them. So our friend is safe. We have heads for you. What is left to discuss? Is this enough? Do you wish to say anything else? Any sentimental things? Ask for any questions? Or is this literally all that I needed to do? Because honestly, it would have been cheaper to fake this footage than actually do a live feed. Well, good. You're wasting money. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Edith, are you okay? I'm assuming... Oh, yes. Uh, so... You're doing this of your own volition? Edith, oh, yes. Edith, they... we met a monkey. You did? Yeah. Okay, bye. Like, like a little monkey? <laughs> Uh, Tyrannic, you definitely get a possibility for that. <laughs> I mean, that's really all we needed, is it's one thing to say that she went on the mission willingly, it's another to show that she is actually on the mission willingly. Mm -hmm. We are no strangers to deception. Again, I... I understand. She kind of swallows something down. So, Lapis, you said that there was something I could do for you. Yes. Um, in exchange for these heads, uh, you've offered Zongwei and Edith, and since you don't have Edith anymore, um, there is an auction. <sighs> you, Shens? Mm -hmm. I've been speaking with Jean Wei. Mm -hmm. I'm not buying the sword for you. Is the sword actually at the auction? It has been found. That is not a question for me to answer. However, Jean Wei is here, and the person who brokered the last piece of information for it is here. I, I, the Frenchman. Um, and yeah, JM, um, I have this Cosm card. What is your Cosm card? Feud. Uh, why don't you read it out loud? So someone is out to get your hero. I feel like they're already in the room. This isn't a surprise. But a, a nondescript bystander might recognize her from some past misdeed or a vengeful foe might stalk her from the shadows. The foe might attempt an ambush, frame her for some crime or offense, or simply tarnish her reputation. Gain one to three possibilities to spend, depending on the strength of the foe. And only you get the possibilities in this yes. case. What a selfish thing to do, Lapis. No. Yes. Um, like, and? <laughs> yes. All right, so let me ask you this. Uh -huh. Let's start here. Uh, do any of you want to ask a question of uh, either of those two people before Lapis plays the card? Or are we jumping right into this? Um, I mean, I would like to turn to the Frenchman. I would like to think that there's a little bit of, one, a kinship, two, the an understanding of information exchange. Oh, um, yeah. Three, B will pull out her flask and pour the Frenchman some good French wine. Because... <laughs> I mean, this could be really fancy booze, but taste of home is better than just about anything. Oh, yeah, no, of course. I'm with you 100%. Um, and she'll look at him and say, look, information exchange is a two-way street. It is. What can you tell us about this sword? Well, as part of a two-way street, I do expect you to... Uh... 
I'll reach in my bag and pull out the ledger. There, very well. So, what you need to know, and he, he holds out his hand for the ledger. Before I, I hand over the whole ledger, rip out a page. I mean, I, I love technology over the physical, but I also understand the importance, so I will not go that far. But I, I would like to, to hear a little bit before I hand over the multitude that is within that ledger. Very well. You, uh, I give you this information, you get the, uh, the ledger back to me. I will, however, hold the accounts that you have paid off as debts in your column. But... Despite retrieving this? The retrieval of the ledger, uh, jean was in exchange for a past deed. The use of the ledger for your own benefit was not part of the original deal. But I must admit, once I calm down, and the lady in red, she's kind of, <laughs> I, uh, I could not fault a fellow countrywoman for the action that she has taken, because honestly, in the same place, I would have done the, the same thing. You have, to, you have to use the resources to your advantage. Of course, of course. So, your question. Is the sword really at the auction? Yes and no. Ah. Masamune's sword, it is there. However, you are not looking for the sword, correct? You're looking for the piece from the map. I assume, much as the uh, this fine gentleman uh, explained what he and his family were keeping, you have uh, uncovered the meaning of the tablets, yes, and the images on the on the silk. I've worked enough with Grigori and Volkov to know a bit about, and of course, your new bosom companion, Lapis, to know the importance of what they seek. And ever the businessman, I do not cast aspersions on those I work with, but. Would you like to explain what is going on? And uh, Zhang Wei kind of sets the teacup down, like just rattling it the whole time. And something goes flying by, and for a brief moment, all of the windows are kind of illuminated white, and they're kind of uh, like the corporate, uh, the smart house kind of dims the, the glass, and then as it passes, it, it comes back up. What was it? <laughs> uh, there, are, there are a ton of things flying around in Pampas in Shanghai airspace. So, uh, it whatever it was, it moved quickly. Okay. Uh, do you want to give me a? Uh... Uh, Lapis, go ahead and give me a find roll. So, I uh, after talking with. Mr. Oh, she's Frenchman. Mr. Frenchman. Uh, and spending some time in discussion with him, uh, I remembered uh, oh, right. there is... My grandfather used to tell me a tale. The same tale as uh, what was on the tablet. The young woman uh, wooed by the great Kame of the sea visions of war in the heavens, the darkness that will consume all worlds, all of this. 
and how Masamune forged his blade as part of his attempt to stop this dark warning from coming to existence. But it is said that he tested the blade three times. And the first two times, once against a great stone pillar in the cave where he forged the blade, the cave where the Kame came to the, the woman and it shattered. The second time, in the traditional manner, cut through the neck of the condemned criminal, and again the blade snapped. And last, he reforged the blade a third time. This is the blade that my family has sought and harbored. My grandfather, he always said it wasn't the blade that was at fault, but that earthly metals could not contain the majesty of the hilt that the Kame of the Sea gave to Masamune. So in the end, even though it was his finest blade, he hid away the hilt in that cave and replaced it with something else. If you seek this, and there's a noise, and the old man just falls over and hits the couch. And there's a there's a shad like, as you turn and look, there's a small hole in the window. And the lights come up and flood the whole room. What did you get on your find roll, Lapis? Oh, a one. Oh, well, in that case. Lapis got a one. Oh, I Jeez. forgot to get my HTM screen down. I don't get a Lapis one very often. And it's not a disconnect because find is not connected to any specific uh, cause of action. Pardon me, everyone, as I grab this off the shelf. Gotta have my. All right, so Lapis with a one. Uh, do, do, do. 26, 36, 39. Plus 11. Uh, there is a second pinging noise. 24. Ow. <laughs> uh, so up five. Uh, Lapis, the round takes you right in the chest. <coughs> oh, that's a infinity. Oh. And a five. So up 10. Uh, 24. Uh, that may have come across even louder. Uh, Lapis, your armor is not, your toughness is nine, yes? Yeah. Uh, so Lapis, that would be three wounds and six shock. Would you like to soak it as the I sniper would, round takes you in the I chest? I would like to soak it, yes. The second shot shatters the window. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. <laughs> Oz, always good to see you. Support the Becca fan club. Support. Um, that, uh, my reality is an 11. So an 11, this is not Oroch. So you take zero shock, but you will take two wounds. Do you want to up it up? Um, uh, with the possibility? Yeah, why not? All right, go for it. Um, so if I add the possibility to it, um, that's a 17. All right, so a 17 will take it from three wounds and six shot to one wound. Okay. Um, As the glass shatters and the rain comes flooding in, you can see the light that you were looking at, Lapis 
is another one of those uh, helicopters like uh, Harani uh, flew away in. Okay. And there are a, uh, a gaggle of uh, guards in flexiflex body sheathing. They begin to leap from there and you can see the person who sniper rifle she pulls her head away you see a woman with long animate thick red hair and because lapis got shot becca i'm gonna let you tell me when to stop shop oh that might have been a good card uh i'm gonna let you tell me when to stop shuffling your friend's here my friend is here uh -huh. um however uh as as the bullet hit my chest Mm -hmm. And I grunted, uh, there was a brief flare, and my force fields uh, prevented the wound. Okay, the last one. All right. Mm -hmm. How many charges does your force field have? Uh, now it has four. It has a total of five. Okay. You're going to shoot me so much. All right, uh, you can stop shuffling. <laughs> All right, do you want me to cut or just draw the top card? Uh, draw the top. All right. This is the woman from the parking garage with the Medusa-like hair. Yes. Yeah. Her name All right. Is... The first card is they strike. Villains go first, heroes go second, and are fatigued. The approved action is maneuver. Immediately, uh, immediately, uh, the two security guards come running up and just reflexively grab Harani and start taking her into the back. The woman in red steps in front of uh, the Frenchman as the guards kind of hit the ground and three of them draw katanas and the other two pull out uh, Glock nine millimeters. So they're going to start. Uh, two of the two of the ones with katanas go charging right at Tyrannic because we know all he has been looking forward to is a katana fight in a uh, fancy apartment. And I got you, buddy. Nice, all right. All right, well, that was not great rolls. Uh, Tyrannic's melee defense is, well, it's only eight. Maybe these are okay rolls. Minus four. Uh, so they will hit you. I will spend two possibilities, one for each of them, and not roll that much better. So Tyrannic, one will hit, um, oh, so 14 and 15. Uh, 14 doesn't. Nope, both will get a, a bonus die of damage. Your toughness, sir, if I'm reading correctly, is 12, correct? No, it's now 14. What? Nicely done. Yeah. All right, so right now you are up one on the damage. Uh, so one will do a uh, two shot to you. The other one, uh, let's see here. Eight. One will do, so you take two shock, and then you'll take a wound in two shock. Do you want to soak anything as they can just come in uh, blades, uh, yes, I was, I was kissing sure. through the air at you? All right, go ahead and give me your soap roll. We'll come back and let you know uh, what they are, uh, what they are planning, or you can tell me what the rolls are here in a second. The other one goes running right for uh, Jean Via. Uh, Maddie, I assume that your melee uh, number is less than a four, or higher than a four. Yes. Okay, so the other guy comes in, and V, as you kind of step back, he brings the blade down against the leather couch, and the leather just parts, and the stuffing kind of pours out from a wound, and you hear Scotty go, no! Um, the other ones are going to take shots at Lapis, and they are going to double tap. I'm going to dodge. They're going to do two at Lapis and one at the woman in red. You're going to dodge? Yeah. All right, so go ahead and give me your your uh, your dodge roll. Hey, Restart, good to see you. All right, well, I got double 16s. Which is up three. What'd you get on your dodge roll? Uh, a total of 24. All right, so 24 is the number to hit. 
Um, melee weapons only gets me to 15. Oh, wait, no, this is fire combat. Fire combat gets me to 16, but I don't know that I'm going to get... 26 would get me to 9. As long as I don't roll 10s. All right, we're going to spend it. Um, so 16, 27, still only a plus 9. So one just sprays the area that you were standing in. Nothing touches you, Lapis. The second one hits you for... Uh, 23, 32. So I'm up, I'm up eight on you. So that'll hit with one die of damage and the double tack in there. 19, up 10. So two wounds and four shock. What do you want to do? Um, I will, uh, my first question is, this is my feud card response. Yes. So you will get three possibilities right now. And then I will spend a possibility and attempt to soak it. All right. Uh, reality, uh, 16. All right. So a 16 takes that from uh, one wound and two shock to nothing. Okay. Uh, the woman with the red hair uh, Lee may come take like tosses the sniper rifle to someone out in the copter, runs all the way back to the far side of the helicopter, and then runs and sort of jumps through the rain. I really just want to land. That. I want to have Scotty put his arm out. <laughs> right? Uh, Scotty's at the window. Hits, rolls, and comes up uh, and tries to uh, get you into a. Uh, 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 first is the hair just kind of comes whipping at you. What is your maneuver? Maneuver is 16. Nine. So I got a 19. <laughs> so you're at a minus two uh, to everything you do as this hair just kind of like faints and kind of gets in your face. You're trying to kind of get out from around it. And then this kick kind of gets you right in the side. That's a 10. So that is a uh, 22, so plus a... How many times can I dodge? Uh, your dodge is set for the round and okay. that used your action for this upcoming round, so. Okay. I gotta get to a 24 to do it. Well, actually, a 22 now because of the maneuvering. Just like say, like that. Maneuvering. Mm -hmm. No? Sorry, we're strategizing. Hmm. You're strategizing? Mm -hmm. Now that you're not here, we don't actually have to pass post it notes. <laughs> hey! That hurts just a little bit. <laughs> Uh, she kicks you in the side uh, for no bonus damage. So just the straight damage that she hits you with, which is uh, going to be uh, two shock. Kind of catches you right, uh, right in the side. The wind gets knocked out of you. It is now the hero's turn. Remember, maneuver is the approved uh, action. So question. Answer. What are the red-haired ladies, hench people wearing slash wielding? Uh, they are wielding uh, regular katanas, uh, not electric, just just regular, and they are wearing uh, uh, sh uh, what seems to be like a body sheath. Do they have any comms? Any they do have comms. So, if I were to activate my jamming device, would that cause any kind of feedback and or do something to possibly incapacitate them for a round? I would allow it to, um, I would allow it to give you the opportunity to make a trick roll against all of them because you spent a possibility in the past to set this up. So basically they would go from full 
you know, full combat uh, data coming into them to nothing. And so I would count this as a trick. You want to do it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Give me the trick roll. And then I will yell at Scotty to beam it. <laughs> uh, all of Scotty's joints go from like the soft blue light that is uh, kind of emanating from them to like a violet red. And uh, it sort of mood lights the whole place in sanguine uh, neon glow. Uh, my initial roll is a 14. Is it really? Yeah. You sure you don't want it to be something else? No, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm kind of happy with a 14. Cool. Hey, Greg, uh, these guards definitely need a higher uh, trick ad. Uh, so, <laughs> with a mind of seven, uh, you definitely get a, uh, a good success. So, uh, what would you, uh, do you want to give them a minus four to everything they're going to do on their next action? Or do you want to give them a minus, or give everyone else a plus four to attack the goons? You're not attacking this round, yes? Do you, yeah. I feel like because they're kind of wailing on us, a minus four next round would be beneficial, or would you like the plus four? I will do the minus four for next round. All right, so they're all going to take a minus four. All right, I got that marked it down. Uh, who's going next? So Lapis can't take an action at this point. Sure. Scotty so... has jammed. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Maddie, hold on. I'm angry at you for stealing all of these infinity rules from me. Um, your jamming device will work for the next 17 minutes. Nice. I was like, what D6 minute? Well, there's a six. <laughs> there's another six. Nice. There's a third six. Why couldn't I do this when shooting Lapis? Yeah, why not? That is Beautiful. true. That is true, Greg. All right, what do you got? Tyrannic and Peaches? Yes, so I have, I have two henchmen in front of me. Uh, you do. Okay. Um, okay, and I soaked for uh, 12 on that last one. Uh, so a 12 would reduce it to, uh, from, reduce it by one wound and all shock. Awesome, um, great. So I will, you know, wipe the blood off my face. <laughs> uh, the electric katana comes out but as I, I whip it out, right over the top of me, Peaches comes and swoops over my head. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> Are you ready for this? Okay. <laughs> Peaches comes screeching and is going to try and maneuver. Not expecting the surprise Peaches. Surprise Peaches. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, Peaches is going to charge one of the henchmen. Um, and try and maneuver and potentially even push them out the window. Sound good? That sounds great. Okay. So that would you would need an outstanding success on the maneuver to get them out the window. Okay. An outstanding success. Yes. Point so point an outstanding. Eight. An out. Well, uh, you don't know what their what their maneuver is, but you need to beat it by ten. Oh. So <laughs> use that card into action. Oh. All right. So we'll use a possibility. to grace. Okay, that winds up being a 23 with a possibility. To push uh, for your maneuver on that one guy? Yeah. One of the guys in front of you? All right, so that is definitely an outstanding success. So uh, Peaches just goes flying into this guy, knocks him off the roof, and then Peaches kind of pulls a pulls just straight vertical uh, between the helicopter blades and the side of the building, and we'll return to you at the start of the next action. Nice, okay. And then the remaining guy, uh, <laughs> Mr. Furious, totally gets a possibility because he just said an outstanding success means he will be outstanding outside. <laughs> That's great. So that gets me <laughs> not great. That gets me a 12 to attack him with my katana. With your katana? Yeah. Okay, so 
A 12 is what you need to hit. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. All right. Great. So roll, roll a battle die? Nope. There's no bonus damage. It's just the 19, or it's the 13 damage. And AP 2. And AP 2. Um, all right. So, Tyrannic, what does it look like when you cut one of these guys down? Whoa. Whoa. Okay. You're so fancy. I would like to envision it as I'm whipping it out overhead and Peach is charged with the other guy. I come down right on the other one in one swooping motion. All right. Yeah. All right. So, that's it's two of them dramatic. removed from the fight. Now, remember, when you guys take your action, you take two, uh, two shock because of the fatigue. And I'm gonna scoot three inches to the door. <laughs> no, you physically. Oh. Okay. <laughs> she gave me a no, and I was like, "What on earth are you planning?" And she meant for the the camera. So. Uh, the <laughs> woman in red steps up to try and get in uh, the face uh, or to try and help uh, Lapis fight Lee May. And as she comes in, again, blades kind of extending from her arms, she comes in and starts fighting, and Li Mei completely stops her cold uh, with a with a combination of an arm lock and the and hair. You can actually hear the sound of her arm dislocating, and the and just kind of throws her down onto the couch. The Frenchman. The lady in red mm -hmm. being taken out by the lady with red hair because mm -hmm. that's not. It, good. it is. It's okay. sort of full circle. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. And uh, it is now time for the next card. Did everybody take their two fatigue and put a card into play? No, where do we put fatigue? Why uh, fatigue is just two shots. Sorry, that's what I meant. You guys take your two shot. Why? Uh, because that what was up was on the card. Oh. Question: Did the Frenchman do anything? The Frenchman gets the uh, out of the room. Oh. oh, yeah. Can I talk to him before he leaves? No, he, he goes back into the same room that Harani disappeared into. So, new card? Uh, the new card uh, is... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, villains go first, heroes get a surge, and it is defend or intimidate as the approved action. So, what you can see, Lapis, is on the helicopter. Two of the other guys, they kind of lift something up from the floor, and you can see this smart metal stand kind of kicks out. They are setting up a minigun. You're guessing you have one ish rounds until that thing goes live and then just starts perforating the room. Um, Big champ as well. Um, their comms, uh, no, they are outside of the radius of, I mean, they're, they're, they're outside of the building. So, so uh, this gun, is it a smart gun, or if I put the woman with the red, if I put Lee Mei between me and the window, she'll get hit first? I mean, it definitely looks like everyone would get hit. You don't, you're from the Nile Empire. You don't... Right. Yeah. But it's not like, I mean, I saw the leg snap into place, but I'm not assuming that it, it has special magic bullets. You, you are, you... You have nothing that would lead you to believe that has special, <laughs> special magic bullets. Sorry, chat is on fire tonight. One-ish rounds before the ish hits the fan. Okay. Uh, so, Maddie, I will definitely say their comms are jammed all the way out to the helicopter. Sweet. Um, all right, so Tyrannic has no one with katanas in front of him. Because he is... A beast. Uh, the other <laughs> one comes at uh, Jean Vieux and apparently can't roll above a six tonight. Because uh, I'm so devastatingly beautiful yeah. that he just can't. I mean, I mean you however you, you want to. It's because I'm so sparkly, he can't see straight. I mean, that is fair. So he comes in and, and V, you just kind of keep your 
your cybernetic arm between you and him and sparks are flying you guys can hear the sound uh well you hear two sounds you definitely hear the sound of metal on metal and then sort of that wet sick snapping noise as the woman in red kind of slams her arm against the uh the couch as her action to pop it back into place uh the ones with guns uh lee may is currently engaged with uh lapis so they turn and uh hold on nope they all take shots at tyrannic because uh he took out two of two of their team All right. Uh, so, Tyrannic, do you want the news or the bad news? <laughs> the, the news. Uh, all right. So, Tyrannic, uh, their fire combat is 13. Your dodge is 10. So, they're already up three. So, the first one hits with a bonus die damage. The second one hits with a bonus die of damage. Oh, and the third one hits with two bonus dice of damage. Well... Bummer. Yeah, that's a huge bummer. But they're at negative four, right? Did you factor that in? Oh. I did factor that in. Damn it. I tried. I, I, I appreciate that. Oh, look, those sixes came back to me. Oh. If you love dice, let them go, and they will come back to you. Words to live by. Um, all right, so Tyrannic, the first double tap takes you in the chest for... All right, hold on. The second one only gets you for uh, two. And the last one, hold on to these dice, uh, eight, uh, 15, 23. Uh, All right, so Tyrannic, the first shot takes you for a wound in two shot. What do you want to do with it? I Well, there's more coming, right? There are there are two more shots coming. Okay. Uh, I guess I won't do anything. Am I missing something? No, he's just asking if you want to soak. Oh no, I do not want to soak. Okay. The second one uh, kind of clips you, and you only take two shock from it. And the third one also does a wound and two shock. With those minus fours, it dropped me from doing two wounds and four shock, a wound and two wounds. So you can thank Maddie for Go Scotty. Maddie. You made the right yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so it is now Lee May's turn. You yes. are so easy to find and so pathetic in the company that you keep. I wonder why it is that they want you as dead as they do. I'm sure it has to do with my charming personality. Um, she turns and she grins at you, and you can see that uh, several of her teeth have uh, chrome implants. Her hair kind of fans out around her, and you can hear the sound of the grunt uh, as, uh, you know, that wet noise of, of relocating the shoulder. And so she's going to do a multi-action. She's going to do an intimidate, and uh, then she is going to do an unarmed attack against you. So... Multi actions. Is she at minus four also? Uh, no, she does not have the comms. Uh, 23. So minus two for the multi action. Okay. Also. All right, what is your intimidate? 11. Okay, so she got a good success against you. And, um,. Plus seven unarmed, so we're at uh, da, da, da. nineteen. 
19. Your unarmed is... 15. 15, so it's a normal success. So, well, uh, so the Intimidate does, uh, drops your defenses by four. Ah. Yep, because she got a good success. And, uh, Becca, how many cards do you have in your desk? Four. In her hand or in play? Uh, do, do, do. Improved action. Oh, um, what cards do you guys have in your action pools? Do you have more than one card in your action pool? No, just, one. just the one for each of us. All right, well, he only affected you, so discard your card from your action, or she only affected you. Discard your card from the action pool, no. Lapis. <laughs> You don't have a you don't have a choice. She is in a she is an insidious foe. And then she will hit you for uh, a wound and two shock as she again just kind of grabs you and she starts trying to get you in that same arm lock. You can feel ligaments tearing. You can feel something snaps uh, I... as like one of your ribs gives. Um, she attempts to snap something and the force field around me uh, flares again and she is unable to fully uh, get her arm on mine. And uh, no, no wounds, no shock. Okay. It is now the hero's turn. What do you guys want to do? Uh, the, the woman in red snaps her arm back into place. Um, I will kill you for that. I'm gonna double tap Lee May. Okay. And then uh, get behind. Or then uh, so okay. Double tap we may, and then get behind the couch before the gun opens up and uh, say, "Everybody duck." <laughs> All right. What you get? Well, hang on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh Okay, hang on. My nineteen. Yeah, <laughs> I don't care how high you are. Um, and I have the minus two. Still. Uh, the minus two from what? A while ago. Something she did last round. Yeah. Oh, no, that has gone away. Okay, oh, cool. Okay, um, and that is a 24. No, 25. Nice. A 25 to hit her mm -hmm. is an outstanding success. Excellent. Ooh, a six. A six! Nice, keep going. A five. Uh, 15, 18, plus 14 is... Wait, that's a star, that's a six. No, there's two stars on that one, uh, a five and a six. Um, 18 plus 14 is 32. All right, well, a 32 minus her toughness would be four wounds and eight shock. So she's going to spend a possibility to get a, uh, a soak roll. All right, well, she got a 36, which is a plus 11 to her reality of 10. So there's just this flurry of bullets as Lapis goes flying back, trying to get back over the couch, cry, cry, crying out, get out of the way. Rain is coming in through the, the shattered windows. You guys can see the barrel of the minigun is starting to spin up. Lapis, you hit the ground behind you and you kind of stand up, guns smoking. And for V and Tyrannic, Lee May was a, uh, it was something so fluid and something so beautiful that you actually just kind of pause in the middle of the fight and none of the bullets touch her. And she kind of settles, whoop, knocks a bunch of glasses over and settles down in a stance focused right on Lapis. Lapis, you hear the ding of an elevator behind you. V and Tyrannic, what do you guys do? I got something to do with something. Yep, go for it. Um, so Peaches is outside. 
Um, Peters is outside. Okay. He briefly contemplates flying up into the night sky. There's someone on the street, Tyrannic, that looks up and as Peaches kind of flies in front of the moon, like wings extended. It's, it's beautiful. And I it's, think um, Peaches, let me know what you think about this. Peaches wants to spook the helicopter pilot to mess with their, their minigun and potentially crash the helicopter. I mean, I love it. What's the, uh, what is Peaches trying to do? What is Peaches trying to do here? I think maybe it's a maneuver, maybe it's an intimidate, um, and I think he wants to pop up, like, and the, the helicopter pilot, you know, just gets, a, you know, pterodactyl in his face. Mr. Furious, it's that one beautiful moment where the clouds part briefly, and Peaches. <laughs> so maneuver, does that sound appropriate? No, because maneuver is really about getting the person into a disadvantageous position. If you want to scare them, that would definitely be a intimidate role. Okay. How intimidating is Peaches? Are we about to find out? He's more maneuverable, so. Ooh. Oh. Okay. So that is a seventeen intimidation. Not bad, Peaches. Yeah, Peaches. Peaches yeah, he's spooky. Okay, so here's the thing. Here's the thing, Michael. Yeah. A 17 is a good success, which would give them a might. You could give the whole helicopter a minus four to everything they do on the next, the next page, or on the on the next turn. What did you put into play, Hero? Do you have anything that you can do to get it to get five more? Because yes. if you can get to a 23, yes. that's will, an outstanding success. I will play a hero card. Nice. Which acts as a possibility, yeah? Yes. All right, go ahead and roll it and add it. I'm with zero or felon. <laughs> this could be epic. Yeah, so that would have gotten it to a 20. Push to 20. Well, wait, no, hold on. Don't forget what the no, possibility no, always counts as at least a, a 10. A 23. That's enough. Is that enough? All right, so, Michael, I'm yeah. not sure if you're familiar with this rule. We covered it in the Q&A last week. On a outstanding success on an interaction attack, it removes any non-reality rated foes that was target it was targeting. So let me ask you this. What does Peaches do and what happens to the helicopter? Oh man. Well I think Peaches is so spooky that the helicopter pilot just instinctively jerks on the controls and we see the helicopter blades, you know, collide with the glass in the, the building and, you know, Scrape it on down to there. Like the Matrix when the helicopter goes in. Like a uh, knife through butter. All right. So the blades hit the side as as the peaches cook up. Swoops down and scares the bejeebus out of uh, the helicopter pilot, who then tries to overcorrect and goes flying into. If I may change one thing, we'll say he flies into the opposite building. So none of you need to make dodge rolls against uh, helicopter blade attacks. Appreciate that. And there is this uh, massive fireball as it starts to scrape its way down the side. And V, as it's your turn, you can just see the light from below just illuminates the street. Uh, before you go, Lapis goes, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> We're yeah. I guess. That's nice. fine. That's great. So, if Trina got rid of all non-reality rated foes... You haven't foes, done anything, though. No. no, it's just Peaches. No, no. Oh, yeah. Uh, Peach... Oh, yeah. Trina still has a turn. And um, it was the it was the, the non-reality rated foe that they targeted, not um, all yeah. of them. I think I'll just heal myself while I've got a moment here. And, okay. Um, yeah, that would... That would do it for, yeah, that would do it for a good success. And so two wounds are taken off. Okay. All right, so uh, Tyrannic then kind of, you know, hunches over a bit, calls on the prayers to his goddess, and you can see his wounds close. V, bring us home here on this round. What do you got? So it's, how much 
how many people are left in the room? So Terenic has effectively taken up two in the room and the helicopter. Yes. How many are left in the room? There are four left in the room, plus Lee May, and plus whatever's going on in the elevator. Lime doesn't have any we visible weapons. She has been uh, throwing punches and kicks. You'd have to disarm her. Yeah, uh, I will say the approved action is taunt. If you want to try and impair her, if you can taunt her, uh, you would also get a destiny card from it. Uh, my taunt sucks, so... Mine was a six. <laughs> Mine's an eight, so it's not much higher. <laughs> but what I will do is I will play my Cosm card, Fists of Fury. Oh. For the remainder of the scene, unarmed combat is favored skill for all PCs. Oh. And then I will wind up, and I'm a puncher. <laughs> there you go. Right in her snaky face. <laughs> not just Fists of Fury, but Fists of Steel. Yeah. Noise. Pretty there you go. much. Pretty much. All right, so uh, Maddie, so I will keep a note because we're gonna. All right, so Fists of Fury is in play. Yep, but even favored, that roll sucks. So I'm gonna spend a possibility. Well, I don't want to get in this place. Um, so that's a uh, 21, which is 8, so that's an 18. Holy crap. Maddie, you. Uh, Maddie, you had a good success against Lee May. <laughs> yes. Okay, so what do I roll for my. Oh, that's a good one. I feel like well, I'm gonna D6. run and jump and just punch. So a d6. Because you got a good success. Right. Yeah, it's so gonna be a d6 plus your strength. Plus, oh, plus my strength. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's not bad. Come on. Um. So that'll be 10 points of metal fist, like twice, face. punch to snake face. Does she have fangs? Right. I would like to break one of her fangs. Oh, nice. uh, so you hit her and it rocks her back. She was totally not expecting Fist of Fury from jean -Pierre. And she, you hit her hard enough that she actually skids back on the, the soaked carpet because the rain is coming in. And she looks at you and you can see a little bit of blood coming down uh, the left side of her, uh, out of her mouth, and she spits something metal on the ground. And you can see it's one of those chromed teeth. And so here's my question for you, group. Do you want me to draw the next card so you will know what the initiative will start at next week? Or do you want to be surprised? I kind of want to draw it, because if it's another enemy goes first. All right. <laughs> that was my, that's what I heard. I heard draw it, so yeah. I had drawn okay. it. The card is showdown. Heroes go first and get a flurry. So you'll okay. get to take two actions. So I can punch her twice? Yeah. And the approved action is trick. But that is where we're going to pause. We're not going to say what's going on with the elevator. Uh, the, the whole scene is now lit by the fire from below of the helicopter. And Peaches definitely has a peach-eating grin, or a human-eating grin, I guess, on, on, uh, on its face as it comes flying back in the window. Guys, it is wonderful to be back at Ford. I hope you all had fun. Uh, Becca, thank you for leaning into the Cosm cards. Yeah. And, well, and uh, B, like, I would not have expected you to play Fists of Fury, but I'm very excited that you engaged with it. Uh, Tyrannic, you are a delight as 
always. <laughs> and uh, we will see you all next week for more Torg. Tune in on Thursday as we, if Torg is the bright, exciting cinematic game, <laughs> Fading Suns was a deeply traumatic and emotional game last week. If you have not watched last week's Fading Suns, please go check it out. Join us on uh, Thursday for more Fading Suns, but we will be back next week uh, for more Torg's Day Night game. Everybody, it's always good to play with you guys. It's always good to see you in the chat. Thank you to everyone from uh, Greg to Mr. Furious, Zero Earth Element, Restar, Osbear, um, uh, Phantom, Josh. I'm hoping I didn't miss anybody. If I did, I apologize and I will catch you next week. We'll be back in one week. Uh, until next time, I am uh, JM, your GM. These are the Horsemen and Lapis. And uh, until, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay gaming. Have a good one, everyone.